And basically the idea is you play really big bodies that are hard to remove. What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joku DMD, and today we are talking about the most slept on leader in the One Piece card game. All right, so first and foremost, I got a shout out to the dude Cross AI. If you guys haven't checked out his channel, it's definitely worth going over there and giving a subscription. He is covering a lot of meta decks, uh, things that are coming up in flagship events. He's been talking about a lot of different deck lists, and he's put me on a lot of different deck ideas and inspired me to start building different stuff and making things. So definitely go check his channel out, drop him a sub, like some videos, and see what he's posting because he does go over a lot of One Piece card game content. Pretty sure everybody thought this man was just a vanilla starter leader, myself included. I liked him when the first came out. This is the leader that I liked playing out of the starter deck leaders, but the value you get out of him seemingly isn't that great and doesn't seem like something that could top an event or win through Swiss or any of that stuff. So apparently we're all wrong because this dude just topped a flagship event. Yes, and I saw it on Cross AI's channel and I looked at the deck list and I thought, this is really cool. I love the concept that this is going with. And basically the idea is you play really big bodies that are hard to remove and you're gaining value off your leader's effective extra dawn. So you're, you know, you're getting an extra dawn every turn. Something that is important to consider in card games is when you are using a skill or a card has a skill, you wanna see how much value you get out of that skill, right? Kid's leader effect is fantastic because you know, once or twice in a game, you're going to swing big with him twice. And it's going to cost you two cards and six dawn total to do that twice. But you're still getting a lot of value out of those big swings that you're using off your leader. Whereas this leader really can give you value every single turn. So it's kind of a strong effect, but it has to be used the right way. So I'm going to go into the deck list. This isn't the exact deck list that topped. I made a minor change to it, which I will discuss. If you guys want to see that deck list, go over to Cross AI's channel and check it out. Um, but let's get into this list and talk about it. I'm running three uh, of the two years in Sabadi Archipelago. Uh, he has four in his list, the one that topped, but I think three is fine. I'm even comfortable with two. It's a great card. The trigger is really strong. And just being able to search out a straw hat is a very valuable thing. So I'm running three of these. And then of course, Nami Swan. You gotta have Nami Swan. This is just such an amazingly good looking card. I think it's one of the best looking cards in the set, if not maybe second or third best. But I love this card. I think it's amazing. Paying one to search top five, grab a straw hat. You can't grab another Nami, but you still can grab a straw hat. And basically the whole deck is straw hats. So she's basically just gonna pay one, replace herself and replace herself with something that you may need more in your hand. So really fantastic card. And here was the big change from my list to that list um they were running none of this card i think this card is great i like it a lot it's basically going to do your same leader effect now you're paying one for it and then every turn you can activate main add arrested dawn and there's a lot of cards in this deck that benefit off of having dawn attached to them so i think having four of these is valuable but this was not in the topping deck list and then of course four t chops i am so sorry that i have one non-foil um this is you know i try and build everything max rarity so you guys can enjoy how great these cards look but i was only able to get three of these so far i'm probably going to keep my fourth meet the one piece promo thing sealed but um yeah this is four of him one cost blocker is basically a negate really really strong very useful so great for protecting stuff and then for nico robin i think we're just seeing more and more red decks play this card this card is really should be a four of and every red deck it's so powerful removal is such a strong skill in this game and being able to synergize this with stuff like otama and then swinging into something else and killing the thing that you would have killed with this swing is just really really valuable you're essentially getting two swings out of one you know robin grows an extra hand and really good really really good card so i think four of is really good for that and then sanji's a fantastic card i mean he's the only uh alt art that's a 2k counter and it's a hot looking card um so you know he's gonna take a life and become a 7k which is really strong you're gonna add two rested dawn to him and you get access to your life so in certain matchups there's certain decks that don't swing into your life that much and being able to get that hand advantage back is very very strong and with how powerful this guy becomes you know he's almost a guaranteed hit if you're if you have the opening and you're going in with him him. So really, really strong card. I think four of is good. Now this is one of the other spots for the Namis. Uh, in his list, he's running four of these. I'm running three of these. I think three is all right. This card is really, really good, but there's so much searching in this deck that I feel like you're going to see this card when you need it. Personally, in games, I usually don't drop more than two of these, so I'm fine with running three. I think some people would argue that, but whatever works for you, works for you. I mean, there's no absolute 
this is just what I like. Card's really, really good. Uh, Dawn X2, you can't be blocked. So you can just swing into stuff and really make a uh, make a mess out of their side of the field if you play this guy right. And I love the art. This art is just so good. It's so fierce. Such a, such, uh, this is like Luffy has just declared in his mind that he's gonna kick somebody's ass and this is the look on his face when he's gonna do it. So really good card. Now this was the really interesting card. One of the really interesting cards in the deck. I think stuff starts getting interesting here because the rest of what we saw was pretty much standard straw hat stuff. Now Bartolomeo is a very interesting blocker. He's a two cost that becomes a 5k on your opponent's turn. And one of the points that Cross AI made was that he gets around Nico Robin, which is very interesting, right? So now if they want to kill this with Robin, they're going to need to Otama and then Robin, which is just making them spend another energy. And that's fine, right? So he is Don X2 to get that skill. So that's kind of where I think the Namis and the leader effect are going to come in to really give you the value out of him. But a 5k blocker is strong and you can also combo into him or counter into him so you can keep him alive for the next turn if their swing isn't quite big enough. I think this is a good tech. I, I'm interested in it. Now, Gordon, I haven't been super hype on, but I think he's a really, really good card. Being able to cycle your hand, there's always going to be some card in your hand that you just don't really need. And paying two to bottom deck just to draw allows you to cycle your deck. And we'll get to the card that is why it's really good to cycle your deck. But he's also a two cost and a 3k power. So you're still going to be able to swing into searchers and and, you know, if you re if a blocker is rested, you can swing into the little blockers and stuff. So he is going to have value on the field just as a body to swing with. He's also a 2K counter, which is really good. And cycling a card is strong. Originally, I was playing Usopp in most of my lists. However, Usopp kind of needs a stipulation to draw. He's effectively going to draw through your deck no matter what, because you're going to take a card, put it on the bottom and see a card from the top. I've been saying it since the second I read this girl, but I just think this card's amazing. I feel like there's no reason to ever not run four of these in a red deck. She's a 2K counter. She minuses stuff makes it easier to swing in and clear their board and just pressure their hand and pressure their resources. Otama is just amazing pulling the dango out of her cheek like that. Just really, really fantastic card and so much value on one card. I would, as Azaroff says, I wouldn't leave home without four of these cards with four Otamas in my pocket. And then of course, one of the best red cards, Jet Pistol, just removal again, is so good. And you know, for kid, you minus two on kid Otama, pay four Jet Pistol, kill the eight drop. It's just really, really valuable card. Four of, I think, is really good because you also want to trigger this card sometimes so if you see this off your life you're basically just saving four dawn and you're killing something on your opponent's side so very 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 strong card and it's even got the dawn on it so you know it's real value gomo, gomo, no. and then there's two red hawks in here you know i've been on the fence about red hawk and radical beam i think radical beam is a really good card it gives you 4k for one but the secondary effect of red hawk is really good and i think it's worth that one extra dawn so paying two to get 4k and then ko something that's 4k power or less is really strong because that's just going to clear blockers so if they play a blocker and swing in the wrong order you can just punish them with red hawk and the art on this is so rad it's such a rad looking card so i think two of this is good i like that oh also the trigger on here this can totally save you if you trigger a red hawk and you're tapped out and your opponent just has one swing that they're going to go for game with and you give that card minus 10 that card's not going to be going through on that attack so red hawk has definitely saved me in situations i think the trigger is also really strong but you have to trigger it at the right time. Now here's where stuff starts getting really cool. They're running four shanks. I'm running three. I feel like Shanks is a hard card to play, so I'm not totally comfortable running four yet. Um, I may bump this up to four after more testing, but three of, I think is good. It's just a nine cost 10K and it can't be blocked by little stuff. So, and it's got rush. So you're swinging for 10K the turn you play this thing. And with this deck, you really can establish multiple of these. Having multiple Shanks on board is just kind of devastating. They're really hard to deal with and really hard to remove because they are 10Ks. So setting up appropriately and then being able to play one or two of these is just really going to put the pressure on your opponent and i really like the idea of running multiple of these i mean i haven't really seen any decks running more than two crazy that they were running four i respect it and one day i might get there but for now i had to cut the one for the extra nami and then the last card in the deck is this promo luffy this one's actually in english i don't have the japanese promo so i actually have a card that i can read english on but what this is gonna do is give you a 9k rush swing 
on the turn you play it for six dawn basically because you can use your leader effect to attach one of those if you have another nami on board you can get two rested dawn on him so you're really just tapping six put two rested dawn and then you're swinging for 9k which is big 9k is a big swing and it's 7k base so it's also sticky and hard to remove again no counter power they were running four of this card i trimmed it down to three to make room for the fourth nami but i think this card is really good i love the art on it this is also going to be the super pre-release promo so i'm really excited about this deck i think it's i think it has a lot of potential it won a flagship event which is a big deal those are big tournaments there's a lot on the line to top with a leader that everybody's been sleeping on that hasn't made its way into a single top cut yet is that i've seen at least is pretty awesome so i love doofy he is my best friendo. so i'm really excited to play this deck i'm going to take it to our little local jam today and see how it flies so i hope you guys enjoy this deck list i am a dentist i can't end without doing a dental tooth tip biting your nails is bad news i did it for a long time time personally but people will tell you don't bite your nails it's helpful to know why you shouldn't bite your nails the reason why you shouldn't bite your nails is because your jaw is actually the only bilateral joint in your body it's called the temporomandibular joint tmj which you've probably heard and in that joint there's a little disc and that disc slides back and forth as the condyle of your jaw slides down something called the eminence of your skull or your maxilla here and there's a little disc that sits between that and when you bite your fingernails you put your jaw at an angle where you're putting pressure on that disc which can cause it to degenerate over time and become extremely painful so it's a really great idea to not bite your fingernails you won't damage your teeth and you won't damage your temporomandibular joints thank you so much and i'll see you guys next time